My Big Fat Zombie Goldfish by Mo O'Hara, read by Miss Claybaugh. Chapter 9, The Fatal Flush We all ran to the bathroom door to listen. You see, fish, we heard Mark say. That's where you're going unless you help me. Then we heard water splashing. That must be Frankie splashing around in his bag, I said. He hasn't flushed him yet. Swishy little fishy, Sammy chanted. She was still all zombie fish eyes. We have to get Mark out of there, Prodi whispered. His phone, I said. He'll answer his phone. You take Sammy back home and call him from your house. Tell him you're going to tell your mom and he'll come over to try and stop you. What will you do? Roddy asked. Uh, I'll run in and grab the bag with Frankie in it while Mark's gone. Roddy took Sammy downstairs. I heard the dog flap slap shut and waited behind the bedroom door so Mark wouldn't see me when he came out. It seemed like hours of millipedes doing laps in my stomach before I heard Mark's phone ring. Mwahaha, ha ha He had changed his ringtone to his evil laugh? That was hardcore evil scientist stuff. Then I heard him speak. Yeah, moron. No, you talk, you die. He stormed out of the bathroom and slammed the door behind him. I stayed where I was. I heard him go into his bedroom and kick the goldfish, the goldfish bowl on the floor. Stupid moron, stupid trap, he grunted. He trudged down the stairs, and I heard the front door slam shut behind him. Yes, it was working! Rescue Frankie Plan Part 1. Mark on his way to Pradeep's to stop him from telling his mom that Mark's evil scientist plans. Check. I just had to hope that Mark wouldn't actually kill Pradeep if his mom was there. I crossed my fingers and even my toes inside my sneakers. Rescue Frankie Plan Part 2, actually rescue the fish, nearly check. I had my hand on the doorknob of the bathroom door when I heard that horrible sound again. I heard the toilet flush. I ran into the bathroom and saw water spiraling down the toilet bowl. Frankie, no! I shouted, but he was already gone. Mission unflushable. Then I heard a splash outside. I looked up and saw the open bathroom window. I climbed up on the toilet and looked out. There was Frankie rolling his plastic bag out of the puddle on the garage roof. Then he rolled himself along the gutter, dropped down into the rain barrel, and, with a final dismount, flumped into the grass. I punched the air. He was safe. But I was dead meat when Mark found out the fish was gone. Maybe I could convince Mark that I'd flushed Frankie? No, he'd never buy it. And he'd kill me anyway, just because he could. I'd be better off escaping with Frankie. I was just about to climb out the window and follow him when I heard the next noise. It sounded like someone falling down the back steps, bouncing off the little trampoline and crashing into a sandbox. That couldn't be Frankie making that noise. But if it wasn't Frankie, who was it? I ran downstairs and out the door. Mark was lying face down in the sandbox, groaning. A little trampoline had been put at the bottom of the steps and it was smeared with white chocolate. My first thought was, I'm really good at guessing stuff just from sounds. My second thought was, white chocolate? It's gotta be Sammy. Again, again! I heard the giggling voice from behind me. Sammy was carrying a bowl of chocolate and licking her fingers. She started bouncing on the trampoline. You were funny, she said to Mark. Again, please, again? Mark just groaned. Pradeep came running across the garden toward us. He stopped when he saw Sammy. Sammy, you're supposed to be inside with Mom. Then he looked at the steps and back at her hands. Sammy, did you... Frankie must have hypnotized her to do it, I said. Sammy smiled. Her hands were still covered in chocolate, but her expression was normal. She didn't look hypnotized anymore. I waved my hand in front of her face to check. 
night, Tom, she said and waved back at me. She definitely didn't have the goldfish stare anymore, but she also didn't have the goldfish. Where's Fishy? I asked her in an I'm trying not to panic, but I'm really starting to panic kind of way. Swishy little fishy, she said, still bouncing. Fishy rolled away. We looked around for Frankie. Under the trampoline, around the bike shed, under the shrubs. No good. Mark's groans started to become words. Things like, stupid morons, and they'll be sorry, and I can smell chocolate. He was starting to move, too. Then Sammy squealed again. Swishy little fishy! and pointed to the top of the jungle gym slide. There was Frankie. He was rolling his plastic bag onto Mark's skateboard. The skateboard was pointed down the slide, straight at the sandbox, and straight at Mark's head. Chapter 11, Revenge of the Zombie Goldfish. Frankie's eyes were bright glow-in-the-dark green and his tail was swishing hard back and forth in the water. The goldfish was set on revenge. I looked at Mark lying at the bottom of the slide. My fist clenched at the thought of him trying to hurt Frankie, but could I really stand by and let Frankie hurt him? Um, your goldfish is trying to kill your brother, Pradeep shouted. Uh, not if I can help it, I said, and then I did the second most dangerous thing I've ever done in my life. I've tried to stop Frankie. Frankie swished his tail hard, and the skateboard started to roll down the slide, picking up speed as it went. Fishy wee! Sammy yelled. I raced to the bottom of the slide and threw myself between Mark and the skateboard. I could see Frankie's eyes as he rode the skateboard down toward me. They changed to a soft green, and he swished his tail back and forth wildly. He wanted me to get out of the way. I shook my head and held my ground. I closed my eyes, waiting for the skateboard to hit me. Concussion number two, here I come. Then I heard the skateboard jump off the slide. I looked up to see it flip midair, like when the boarders at the park do half pipes and twists. Except this was a goldfish in a plastic bag, not a skateboarding kid. The thing about goldfish in bags is that when the board goes upside down, they have no way to hang on. The skateboard flew over me and Mark, and then Frankie started to fall. He must have been ten feet in the air. I rolled over onto my back and held up my hands to catch him. The bag hit my hands, but I couldn't hold it. It splatted against my chest, and the bag burst open. Water sprayed everywhere, and Frankie was left flip-flopping around on my t-shirt. No! I shouted, Frankie! I jumped up, cupping him in my hands. I've got you, Frankie! As I, I said as I turned to Pradeep, get some water, quick! Frankie's goldfish mouth was opening and closing, as if he were gasping for breath. His eyes were still the soft green color. He flicked his tail and wiggled, and then he stopped moving completely. Hang on, Frankie! I screamed. Pradeep ran over to the slide with a watering can full of rainwater that he had grabbed from next to the shed. I dropped Frankie into it. Pradeep, Sammy, and I all sat around the watering can and stared at Frankie unmoving in the water. You turned the skateboard on purpose, didn't you? You didn't want to hurt me, I said. Mark was still lying in the sandbox, moaning. The goldfish, my skateboard, why am I wet? Frankie floated belly up in the watering can. He didn't move a fin. Swishy little fishy, Sammy said, sniffling. Her bottom lip started to wobble again, not in a Richter scale level tantrum kind of way, but in a sadder than a little kid ought to ever feel kind of way. He's gone, I said. The millipedes that were swimming in my stomach curled up into a big, heavy millipede lump. I'm sorry, Pradeep said. Not swishy, whispered Sammy. A tear rolled down her cheek and dripped off her snotty nose into the watering can. And that's when it happened. Frankie started to swish his tail, just a little at first. Then his gills started flapping and his mouth opened and closed. And then he flipped over and started swimming in circles around and around. 
fishy, said Sammy and hugged the watering can. Frankie, you're back, I said, hardly able to believe that he was swimming around again. Who's a good zombie fish, I said, and stroked him gently behind the gills. Hey, you know what we just discovered, Pradeep said. I know, I said, that the one thing more powerful than a battery for bringing a fish back to life is, Pradeep said it with me at the same time, toddler snot.